Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So, I've had the S22 Ultra for about a day. I have some thoughts, and there's still one frustrating thing. I want to get this out of the way right now. I actually made a TikTok video about this yesterday, so I think I may have ranted about it in the past. Here's the thing. The S22 Ultra, Quad HD Plus screen, 120 hertz refresh rate, it's not set up that way out of the box. So if you grab this phone and you're not tech savvy, if you don't notice that it's not on 120 hertz, you wouldn't think about it. You'd be like, hey, I'm getting better battery life. This works pretty good, right? Well, go into the display settings, very quick and easy to do. Go in there, go to display, and I'll walk you through this real quick. So you go to display settings. All right, we're there. When you go down here, you see two things. You see motion smoothness. Straight out of the box, it's on standard. You want it on adaptive so you can get that 120 hertz refresh rate. Hit apply, go down, and then here on screen resolution, by default, straight out of the box, it's on full HD plus, right here in the middle. You don't want that, unless you really want to say battery, but if you bought, if you paid all this money for the phone, run it the way it's supposed to, 120 hertz, quad HD plus, if not, buy the S22 plus and save a couple hundred bucks. So there we go. Set that, you're good to go. This is important because also, if you transfer your data over, I use Samsung, Smart Switch, everything, it's supposed to transfer your settings, your apps and everything over, it still does this by default. So even though my previous phone was set on 120 hertz Quad HD Plus, which is the Fold 3, it still dumbs it down. It also turns the screen timeout time down to 30 seconds, and it also turns on adaptive brightness. So go in, set that stuff up how you want, because they do that for a reason. It's to give the illusion that you're getting better battery life, because they're like, hey, it's on them. They should go check it out, right? If they don't know better, then he, 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 then they'll get better battery life, and they'll praise our phone. Anyway, so... <laughs> enough about my conspiracy theory with why Samsung does things. I like the phone so far. If you want one, definitely I would say go pick it up. The only thing is, is it's very frustrating coming over as a Note user. I know I'm talking to Note users right now. You lose out on the SD card slot. Hopefully you pre-ordered it and you got the free upgrade on the storage. I have 256. It starts off at 128 and 8 gigs of RAM. But if you did the pre-order, then you got the 256 and the 8 gigs of RAM. So if you're watching this today, there's still time. You can still pre-order it and get that benefit. Of course, the, the dates are pushed out quite a ways now. You probably won't get it until sometime late in March. I haven't looked. But if you go in there, I've got links down in the description. You can check those out, affiliate links. You can go pick one up still. If you're watching this after it's done, after the phones come out, then all those pre-order options go out the window. You're stuck paying $1,199 for a 128 8 gigabyte model. So that's why the whole pre-order thing is kind of important. Anyway, phone itself... The screen is absolutely beautiful. Like this, this screen is probably the best phone screen ever. The 120 hertz feels really zippy and it's just beautiful. I've been using the iPhone 13 Pro as a primary phone for the last little while and also using my Xperia 1 Mark III. Both of those have 120 hertz displays. Both of them have nice AMOLED screens. This one makes them look not nearly as nice. Like you use those and they're fine. The 120 hertz on a Samsung, I don't know what it is. They probably, they're the ones that make all these panels. So it's probably, they get, they reserve the best of the best for them. It looks really, really nice. It's super smooth. The S Pen's nice, and especially it's running Android 12. There is an expanded quick settings menu here now. They've added a thing or two, and I kind of like it. I never really liked the small little one before, the little spindle. I like the way that they did this, so you're covered there. Of course, if you use the stylus, you can press and hold it. It'll take you into the camera app. Double tap, flips it from back to front, and then if you press it once, it'll take a picture. If you press and hold, it'll start to record video, or you do a long shutter press. So those are some cool things you can do. I like that. That's one thing I've always appreciated about the Samsungs is the, the remote shutter capability. You can use it that way if you want to go out, if you want to vlog, if you want to re record remotely. I like that. And then, of course, you've got the brilliant cameras on the back. Pretty neat. I like the way this looks. There's a lot of different camps on this one. A lot of people seem to not like it. I actually like it. I think it looks nice. I think it looks clean and minimalistic. It reminds me a lot of like the Note 10 Plus. The whole thing reminds me of a Note 10 Plus. It's like they took the Note 10 Plus and the Note 20 Ultra, kind of combined it, and we got this. I, I think it turned out pretty good. It's very heavy. This is a dense phone. Some of the other phones before felt maybe a little lighter in the middle, like maybe it was a little hollow inside. No, this one is dense and stacked from front to back, top to bottom. It is very heavy, but it also has a nice curved edge display. Ergonomics on it are good. 
it's a big phone. Like I can't really use this phone one-handed. I, I got to hold it and then use the other hand. That's just the way life is when you have a gigantic 6.8 inch screen. Ultrasonic fingerprint scanner works better than the Pixel, unfortunately. Uh, the Pixel 6 <laughs> optical fingerprint sensor, I don't want to dig it too hard. I love my Pixel phone. I love my Pixel fans. This is good though. Like I appreciate what Google tried to do, but they wanted to try and make a more secure optical fingerprint sensor and it really just takes more time and makes it laggy. Whereas finally, the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that Samsung has, well, it's gotten better and better and better over time. It works pretty good. Of course, it probably won't work as well once I put a screen protector on it. I did buy one. It's some no-name brand off of Amazon. It's called Rerun. It had a bunch of stars. They're probably fake, but I paid like $10 for this. Comes with a couple of them in there. I'll install it and see how it goes. <laughs> I wanted to get my normal one, which is the... Uh, the Spigen, like liquid something. I bought it several times for my note phones and it's fine. They do get a little dingy over time. These, these, uh, PET style, wet style application screen protectors. They work well. Usually uh, I haven't had too many problems, especially with the Spigen one over the years, but yeah, it, there's nothing as nice as going without a screen protector. Unfortunately, I worry too much about scratching it. So I just can't live my life that way. Maybe if I had the insurance on it and I said, what? Actually, no, I can't even do that. I can't even, let me revisit that. I will not use this without a screen protector on it. It will irk me. I get one micro abrasion and it's like the whole phone is lost. Like, ugh, it's dead to me. <laughs> anyway, so it's got a baseline, 128 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM. I have the higher model. Hopefully you do too. I really like the 256 and the eight. I think that's a pretty good balance for me. But if I were recording content with this, I would want more than that. My iPhone 13 Pro that I use to shoot all my videos that I'm recording with right now, I got the 512 in that, and that's pretty good for me. I'm happy with 512 if I'm going to be recording videos because I record 4K60 for all my videos, and I store a lot of videos, a lot of pictures. I don't ever want to have to worry about it. I airdrop the stuff over. You can see why I use an iPhone mostly. This is the first time that I've been rocking two Android phones since the iPhone 13 Pro came out. That's how significant the S22 Ultra is. I have always been a Note guy. My very first one was the Note 4, and then I had the Note Edge, and then the Note 5, and then the Note 8, and Note 9, Note 10. I've had all of them since the Note 4, and they just keep getting better and better in most ways. Now, of course, they still manage to keep this one at $1,199. No screen protector, no SD card storage, no power brick in the box. I mean, they keep taking more and more things away and they give us faster, faster charging. I hate that argument. They're like, okay, we're doing this to save on, on e-waste. Well, yeah, you are saving on e-waste, but the thing is, is this supports 45 watt charging. The last free charger you gave me, if you remember Samsung, was 18 watts, which takes absolutely forever to charge this phone because it has a 5,000 milliamp battery. So they will sell you a 45 watt charger though, rest assured. Anyway, so the phone itself, it's been really enjoyable. I like the screen. It's brilliant. I've, I've still just been kind of obsessed with the screen. It's, it's gorgeous. Even though I've been using my Fold 3 relatively often, I use it every night to make my videos when I'm making my thumbnails and all that jazz. This one looks nice. There's something about a pristine, really high quality slab phone from Samsung. It looks nice. So I haven't really been able to test out the camera yet. What I have seen, my observations from the pictures other people have been taking, it takes pretty good photos. I really like the skin tones. It looks very natural, but with a little bit of nice saturation to it, it doesn't feel, some phones are just too real. I take a picture with my Sony, it looks true to life, but it doesn't pop as much. I, I don't know. I, I do like a little bit of artificialness. That's why I've always kind of liked the Samsung screens. People hated them because they're oversaturated. They look too good. They don't look realistic. I mean, there's a little bit there. They've toned it down some over the years. This one, beautiful display, looks great. Uh, the only complaint I really have with this is when you see the camera, it does still have the shutter lag, which I'm not crazy about. One day it would be really nice if they would fix that. Pixel doesn't have the shutter lag. iPhone doesn't have the shutter lag. My Sony doesn't really have shutter lag. Maybe one day Samsung can get rid of that. And we've been complaining about it for years. So other than that, I don't really have a whole lot of complaints about it. I got a great trade-in deal on it. If you can get one, that's the best way to get it. If you pay full price, it's going to hurt the wallet more, but of course they've got good financing deals basically everywhere. I don't really know anyone paying cash money full price for one of these phones. But I'm looking forward to testing it out more. I'll let you know as I spend some time with it. 
I'm going off to Barcelona in a couple of days for MWC. While I'm there, I'm going to shoot some pictures, hopefully get to see some of some of the nice, beautiful Barcelona. We'll see. Hopefully not get mugged or robbed or anything bad. But while I'm there, I do intend to take some pictures, and that'll be a good test for me to test this out. I got a long flight to get over there. I think I've got like 13 hours of flying to do, so... There will be plenty of time to test the battery out on this phone, plenty of time to test the camera. This is just some initial stuff to give you some of my thoughts on it. If you like the Note, you're going to like it. The colors are probably the best ever. This is the first time, I think, ever where they've come out with a Note and I've not been, okay, I hate all of these colors. The last time I liked the colors was the Note 8 with the orchid gray and the black. Now we have the different color options plus the exclusive Samsung options like the red one and the sky blue and the graphite. Those look pretty sweet. I am not going to lie. So I got the white one. I like it. The burgundy one's also nice. The green one. The colors look good. I will give Samsung credit this go around. They did a good job with the colors. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. That's like my initial day one thoughts and impressions on it. Been enjoying it so far, but it's been a day. I'm going to test out the battery, test out the camera, do a full review, all that stuff. I got to give it at least a week for the battery and all the adaptive stuff to settle in. I've had some people saying, what's the battery life? Do a battery test. You can't do that until you've had it for about a week. So if you see people who just got the phone today saying the battery life sucks, pay no attention to that. On the first day, the second day you get the phone, you're downloading a lot of stuff, you're stretching out the processor, you're using it at a lot more power than you normally do because you're downloading all these things using 5G, using Wi-Fi. It really is taxing the first day or two. I say, look, don't pay attention to the battery or the, over, or the heating. If you get some heating the first 48 hours, totally normal, as long as your phone doesn't catch on fire. Give it about a week to settle down, then we'll look at some of that stuff and we'll see how it goes. You've got adaptive features for battery, the processor, everything in there. There's so much AI and machine learning that's controlling the experience to stretch out your battery life and to give you optimized performance. Give it some time to work itself out. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.